Good morning, and welcome to this virtual worship service from First Congregational Church in Westminster, Massachusetts on May 3rd. This is, we, we called this service today Selfie Sunday because people have been invited to send in, self, send in selfies of themselves or their families or their pets and they have been put together into a slideshow. During our preparation for communion, when we are singing together the song, Let Us Break Bread Together, we will be together in the sense of there will be a slideshow of all the selfies compiled and it will be a way for us, even though we are apart, to be seeing each other in church for the first time in a long time. Hopefully everybody who is watching this has gotten a copy by email of the order of worship for this service because in that there are things like the words to the hymns that will be sung, the um, responses to things like the call to worship, um, the unison prayers like the uh, prayer of confession and things like that. So for you to have the most fullest experience of this being an interactive service, have those things ready, the, the order of worship ready with you. And at the time when we come for communion in the service, then I invite you to have, if you haven't already, to have the elements, some kind of bread, some kind of a drink to share as a communion. And those things will be virtually blessed by the blessing that I give from here that will also be considered a blessing for the elements that you have in your home. So let us now prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of God. Please join me in the call to worship. We come as we are. Doubting Thomases, fearful disciples, uncertain exiles in our own time and place. You come as you are. Risen Christ, Christ of peace, Holy Spirit, Spirit of forgiveness, God of life, God of new birth. Show us the fullness of your joy. Show us the path of life and living hope.
join me in the prayer of confession. Merciful and loving God, we ask forgiveness because of our consciousness of you is dimmed by everyday desires and needs. We forget that we are a reflection of your image. We act as though you are a Sunday-only event. Help us to a greater common awareness of your deep mystery and infinite presence. Open our eyes from service focus to depth perception. Turn our heads from shallow concerns to external truths. Forgive us, O God. We ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let us take a moment in silent prayer to lift up our own personal prayers of confession to God. Do not fear, dear friends. Jesus is among us, offering us new life and hope. Nothing can prevent God's love for us. Rejoice, for you have been made new in Christ. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the journey, you are welcome here. May the peace of Christ be with each of you. And also with you. Wherever you are in your homes, whoever you are with, take this moment now to share the peace of Christ with each other in a way that is safe under these circumstances in which we meet. And if you don't have somebody that you are worshiping with in this moment, take time, sometime during this day, to call or text or email someone to offer them in your own way the peace of Christ. Let us share the peace of Christ now. Our first scripture lesson comes from the New Testament, 1 Peter, Chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Keep in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you not have seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Fill our minds that we may hear your wisdom. Touch our lips that we may speak your truth. Hold our hearts that we may always follow you. Come now, O Word of God. 
The Gospel comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. This picks up right after the Easter Day story. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Here ends this reading of God's word, and may God bless our hearing and our living of it. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. All the communicating I've been doing lately through teleconferencing and Zoom meetings has got me thinking about how different the resurrection of Jesus would have been if there had been smartphones around. I mean, a lot of incredible stuff took place that day, and it would have been such an advantage to have been able to record what was happening in pictures rather than to have to rely on eyewitness testimony beginning with when Mary Magdalene woke everyone up early in the morning with her startling news. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him, she said. If Mary could have just snapped a shot of the empty tomb with her iPhone and attached the JPEG to a group email addressed to all the disciples, it would have saved her a lot of steps running back to tell them in person. A little while later, Mary was at the door again. This time she said, I have seen the Lord. Maybe the disciples thought she meant she had found where the body of Jesus had been taken. But Mary meant that she had literally seen Jesus up and alive again. The disciples were plenty skeptical. If only she could have taken a selfie of herself with the risen Lord, maybe seeing would have been believing. Instead, later that night, Jesus had to pay a personal visit to the disciples to back up Mary's story. Even so, it took showing them the wounds he still carried from his crucifixion to convince them that it was really him and not just some emoji of their imagination. So eventually, they all got to see for him themselves 
that he was resurrected. Well, almost all of them. You see, one of them, Thomas, was out somewhere when Jesus paid his visit. I wish someone could have made a YouTube video of the conversation when Thomas got home. It would have gone viral. Maybe it would have went something like this. Thomas, we have seen the Lord. What? You mean they found his body? No, he was actually here. He just came through the door and... Wait, did you leave the door unlocked? You know the authorities may be looking for us. The rule is always keep the doors locked. Thomas, the door was locked. Jesus came through the door. How do you know it was Jesus? He showed us the scars in his hands and the wound on his side. Well, I won't believe he is alive unless I know it is him for sure by seeing the scars with my own eyes. Yeah. See, this is where I think a smartphone would have come in handy. The disciples could have all huddled around Jesus while he was there, and Peter could have taken a group selfie so they would all have something to show Thomas to prove that Jesus had really been there. Actually, they would not even have needed to wait until Thomas returned. They could have just texted him the selfie. Maybe Jesus could have held up his hands in the picture for Thomas to see the scars there with his own eyes. That would have got him home in a hurry. Of course, there were no smartphones and so no selfies to provide the proof that Thomas was looking for before he could believe that Jesus was resurrected. Instead, though, Thomas got something even better than a selfie to cure his doubts. A week later, Jesus came back to the room where he had appeared to the other disciples, only this time Thomas was home. Seeing with his own eyes the nail-scarred hands and spear-pierced side, Thomas cried out, My Lord and my God. I guess Jesus cared enough that Thomas's doubts be put to rest, that he made a special trip for an in-person visit. But really, that's what Jesus does for everyone. He meets us right where we are with all our questions and uncertainties. He doesn't wait for us to graduate from some spiritual webinar before we can have a relationship with him. All we need to show is a desire and a will to know him. Because it is not knowledge, but faith that qualifies us as his disciples. Often our questions and our doubts are the very things that open the door for a deeper encounter with Jesus. This story began with the disciples holed up behind locked doors for fear of what might happen to them if they set out foot outside where the authorities might see them. I can relate to that after weeks of staying at home waiting for the COVID threat to go away. But locked doors and fearful hearts could not keep Jesus out. After he offered them proof positive of who he was, he breathed on them, which you don't need me to point out would, under today's social distancing guidelines, be so not cool. Except that what Jesus exhaled all over them was not coronavirus-bearing breath droplets, but life-giving spirit. Jesus told Thomas and the rest of the disciples, you have believed because you have seen me. Blessed are those who, have, who will come to believe and yet have not seen me. When he said that, he was talking about us. None of us have ever seen Jesus with our own eyes, and yet we have come to believe. 
Those who have not seen Jesus either have only us who believe in him to reveal him to them. And that good news has hardly ever been more needed than in these days when just about everyone is sheltering fearfully behind closed doors. With all our smartphones and selfies, our tweeting and zooming, when you get right down to it, the best equipment we have to help people to believe in Jesus hasn't changed since that day when Jesus was first raised. That equipment would be the witness to his living presence that we offer with what we are doing with our lives. I don't know. Maybe someday they'll invent smartphones that are smart enough to take selfies of Jesus standing by our side when we are doing things we feel called to do in his name. But for the time being, all people will have to convince them that Jesus is alive and active in the world is us. We can't produce selfies to prove that Jesus is alive but we can present to the world selves that are committed to following the way he has set before us. Selves that are filled with the Holy Spirit. But as it turns out, that is the best proof of all. Let us pray. Surprise us again, Lord, as Jesus surprised his fearful disciples and Thomas, who struggled mightily to believe. Remind us that the signs of Jesus' resurrection are all around us, even in this pandemic. As we remember this day, our dear friends who suffer from illness and loss, Lord, help us to be a presence of comfort for them. For those who are lost and alone, alienated from family and friends, we ask that you empower us to reach out in compassion, offering appropriate help that will lift them into new life with you. For all anywhere who are in situations of danger, war, and strife, we pray that your peace will be with them and that the warfare and dangers will be vanquished by your good news. For our community, our nation, Lord, we ask that you give to leaders compassion and wisdom. And for ourselves, we ask for the extra measure of faith so that as doubts arise, we may meet them with confidence and emerge as strong witnesses to your love in Christ's name. We offer this prayer, and we pray the very prayer he taught us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Through Christ, God has provided us an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Therefore, we are able to be generous with our material blessings as you have been. Let us now pray our dedication over these offerings that you have sent in or dropped off to the church throughout the week. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings which you have poured into our lives. Now we ask your blessing on these gifts that they may be used to your glory. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, O creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. 
we come to this sacred table, we remember again that this is not the table of this church, but the table of our Lord. And so it is open to all who confess Jesus as the Christ and seek to follow Christ's ways. Come to this table then, not because you must, but because you may. Come not because you were fulfilled, but because in your emptiness you stand in need of God's mercy and assurance. Come not to express an opinion, but to seek a presence and to pray for a spirit. Come then, brothers and sisters, as you are. Partake and share. This table is spread for us that we might again know that in Jesus Christ, God has come to us, shared our common lot, and invited us to be the people of God's new age. Jesus took bread, 
and after giving thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, Jesus took the cup, and after giving you thanks, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. By eating this bread and drinking this cup, we proclaim Christ's death celebrate Christ's resurrection, and await Christ's coming again. Gracious God, we ask you to bless this bread and cup and all of us, wherever we may be gathered and scattered today, with the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Through this meal, make us the body of Christ, the church, your servant people, that we may be salt and light and leaven for the furtherance of your will in all the world. Amen. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ gives. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us receive them in remembrance that Christ died and was raised for you. Eat this, for it is the body of Christ broken for you. Drink this, for the blood of Christ has very life poured out for you. Let us pray. Bountiful God, we give you thanks that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go from this place in peace and joy to serve the Lord. We rejoice in the good news we have heard and go to serve God in all that we do. May God's blessing continue in and through you to others. May God's love also pour into our heart this day and always. Amen. Go in peace and love.